one seventh of what it was at that time, and therefore life on this earth as we know it no longer has the same life expectancy as it did at the time of the flood. A thinning of the ozone layer means less protection from the ionizing radiation from space and less protection for plants and animals. Being interested in Earth's original conditions, after 35 years of research on those parameters, I've attempted to reconstruct that context. And in so doing, I've had our engineers build a biosphere that doubles the atmospheric pressure, that increases the electromagnetic energy, that increases the ratio of oxygen, but not to the level of toxicity, that eliminates ultraviolet radiation, etc. And the experiments that we've run have been very gratifying. In our controlled scientific experiment, we have measured the effects of a pulsed electromagnetic field on biological systems. We have these Pacu piranha fish that normally at three and a half years of age are about this size under optimal conditions. Yet we have them now in excess of 20 inches, weighing just under five pounds each under these control conditions. We have succeeded in producing giantism at an accelerated rate. Taken at face value, the research looks persuasive, though it has not yet been replicated by other scientists. The conclusion in the tradition seems to be fairly clear that, that gigantic beings were existing at one time, and that as human history developed, or phys physiological, uh, emotional, spiritual changes took place, the, those beings who survived seemed to be of a smaller gene pool, but the possibility that there were other strands of humanity, as it were, seems to be uh, almost explicitly stated in, in the Bible itself. In the book of Numbers, we are told that after wandering in the desert with his people, Moses sent out scouts to find a place where they could settle. The scouts went north to Hebron. On their return, they reported, all the people we saw there are men of gigantic size. We felt no bigger than grasshoppers. And that is how we looked to them. The tribes continued northeast to Mount Seir, known today as Petra in Jordan. But that too, as mentioned in the Bible, had been settled by giants. Wherever they looked, it seemed they found the remnants of giants. If we look at scripture, there were giants in the earth in those days. And if we take that literally, rather than symbolically, that there were simply men of great powers and extraordinary abilities, then we could say that the first men, the first humans, were giants. Or we could theorize that these giants came from somewhere else and used Earth as a colony. In itself, this notion is a startling idea. But a people more ancient than the Israelites believed the very same thing. They wrote that the giants were celestial beings who came not from Earth, but from another planet. This is the battleground of the Gulf War. We know it as Iraq. In the distant past, several great civilizations sprang up here. One of them, Babylon, was legendary for its wealth and splendor. But long before Babylon, as long as 6,000 years ago, another remarkable civilization evolved. 
Its people were the Sumerians, who had an extraordinarily advanced culture. Their list of first uh, just almost sounds like a, uh, a whole list of, of our whole society. They had the first bicameral congress, they had the first writing, they had the first school systems, and you know, you just go on and on and on. Um, so you have to ask, uh, well, where did all this come from? And I think that you need to turn to the ancient Sumerians themselves and listen very carefully to what they have to say, because what they have to say, not just in one place, but over and over and over again, is that they were taught civilization by these uh, beings that came from the heavens to the earth. Uh, they call them the Anunnaki. The Sumerians wrote down their history on clay tablets like these, which lay ignored in a Berlin museum for half a century. Few people have been able to decipher this ancient language, but one of them is Zechariah Sitchin. The writings and the pictorial uh, evidence left behind by the Sumerians going back 6,000 years speak and depict uh, people who came from another planet I called Nibiru, and uh, many of the depictions show them uh, much bigger, at least uh, by a third, perhaps more than the average uh, human being, so uh, they were giants. This Sumerian cylinder seal from a Berlin museum is astonishing for several reasons. First, it depicts our solar system with the sun.